Good morning and welcome to Study IQ. I am Prashant Mahavani. I hope you all are in good, my dear friends. Uh, today is 14th of February, 2020. Day is Friday. We have uh, interesting articles on our table. The first one that we are going to go through is called Managing Perceptions. It's an editorial. It's about Jammu and Kashmir, the recent visit of various different envoys in this part of our country. What government is trying to achieve here? We are going to talk about it. But before that, I would like to introduce all of you to our pen drive and tablet courses, uh, which are designed by the best faculties of our nation. Do you know that with the help of our pen drive and tablet courses, there are thousands of students out there. They have cracked various different competitive exams. You can purchase them from studyiq.com. In case if you have any question, queries, doubts regarding it, you can give us a call on the numbers that you can see on your screen. To download the PDF of today's lecture, you have two sources. The first one is my FB page. Second is my Telegram channel. Dear friends, please make sure that you share this lecture with other students. If you have learned something from today's discussion, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. So let's talk about managing perceptions. Now, the overall theme of this article is that government is trying to hide what's going on in Jammu and Kashmir. Now, uh, whether it is right or wrong, we'll talk about it. And then, of course, we will analyze whether uh, what are the things that, of course, government should do. Now, center's decision to take another group of envoys. Uh, envoys basically means representatives of various different countries. So, center's decision to take another group of envoys on a guided tour of uh, Jammu and Kashmir. As you can see on your screen, various different uh, envoys are taking a, a boat tour, right? Uh, they are on a boat and, you know, they visited various different places. And it was all organized by Government of India. And the reason why Government of India is doing this sort of things is it is said in this article that government is going through a considerable international pressure after this abolishment of Article 370. This former state of uh, Jammu and Kashmir is divided into two new union territories. One is Jammu and Kashmir and the other one is Ladakh. Now, uh, I'm sure you'd be aware about this thing that uh, even in the past as well, Ladakh district, when it was a district, it was not uh, going through that much trouble. Uh, most of the troubles that uh, Ladakh faced, when I say troubles, I'm talking about developmental issues and things like that. It was because of uh, this unrest in uh, Jammu and Kashmir, particularly in the valley. But now uh, they are, uh, you know, separated. Uh, they have been, of course, looked after by the central government, but uh, they are two different uh, union territories now. So, Jammu and Kashmir, as we all know, for a very long period of time, it, is, it has gone through, you know, so many ups and downs, mostly downs. Uh, and this place has huge potential. Tourism is, you know, one of the most important thing or, or uh, the biggest potential of Jammu and Kashmir, I would say, is tourism. Uh, of course, there are beautiful culture local products, so many things we can talk about, but I'm just to stick with one or two, like let's say Pashmina uh, shawls and Pashmina products are quite famous around the world, isn't it? So, and food as well, true, food. And then you have apples and other items, Kesar, uh, saffron is again uh, a very important product of uh, Jammu and Kashmir. Uh, but because of this unrest, uh, it has... Uh, we cannot say that it is one of the most developed state uh, in our country. Anyway, now the main reason why government is inviting uh, various different countries and their envoys basically to visit this part of our country is government wants to uh, display this thing. Government wants to send this message out that things are normal in Jammu and Kashmir after Article 370. We don't want to see any sort of international you know, discussion taking place on internal uh, issue or internal thing of our country. Now, Government of India has managed to arrange this three visits uh, without any incident. And government takes pride in this thing that uh, there has been no incidents at all in last three visits. Now, the delegations have been taken to meet with local groups, uh, shown a glimpse of normalcy in, Jum in, in Kashmir Valley, uh, shops were open, people were out on the streets, boating was going on and all these things. You know, envoys were taken to all these uh, sports. Now, in this editorial, we also find that uh, it is written that this local group, so the people uh, who were part of these local groups, they were handpicked 
so they will not means as per this article right uh, they, they were not uh, uh, commoners right they were those uh, people having an inclination towards uh, central leadership the government must recognize that, that uh, this gains uh, in the immediate present are superficial if the ground reality is uh, as it used to be earlier on then this sort of uh, makeup is not going to help because uh, uh, this whole uh, chimera of normalcy this whole image of normalcy or imagination of normalcy uh, that is uh, served at present uh, has very uh, you know it, it raises many questions as well the the visit before the visit the visit was a basically postponed for a day because of this bund after the visit as well uh, internet was uh, snapped because uh, things were a bit out of control so we cannot call jammu and kashmir uh, that normal isn't it uh, things are still uh, going on over there and uh, the real solution is a discussion the real solution is talks uh, that's what i feel because in today's world earlier on uh, war earlier on violence uh, used to be the normal thing or it was uh, the only solution that was available i'm talking about the past history uh, not of jammu and kashmir of course uh, of humanity but in today's world you can solve big problems diplomatically if you have a proper discussion it will take time it's not going to be easy but it is better than bloodshed isn't it so discussion is a thing through which we can solve um, normally every problem i would say right uh, we can sort out i still remember the words of uh, our late minister uh, susma swaraj when this uh, dokalam issue was going on uh, she said in the parliament that to end a war as well you have to have a negotiation and discussion so it is better that we have negotiations now so there is no war you know so government of india uh, should be sensitive enough as well as uh, you know it should try to address the legitimate expectations of people of jammu and kashmir as well as india and that's what uh, it should focus on now moving on to the next item it's about uh, terror and punishment again very easy to understand article it's about this hafi saeed and uh, one of his uh, close aid uh, they both were sentenced uh, five and a half years uh, jail by an anti terrorism court in two terror financing cases in pakistan now pakistani government uh, for years tried to protect hafiz said and this is something that the whole world is uh, you know aware about he means hafiz said i'm i'm means of course i this person is very infamous uh, so but then as well let me tell you that uh, he was uh, a master he is in fact a mastermind of 2008 mumbai attacks uh, very reputed in pakistan huge fan followers and uh, you know this is how this people roll what they do is they will use a chunk of money uh, to support uh, poor people they will provide them with clothes medicines and other facilities you know they will they will basically purchase these people by providing them all these basic things because your government is not able to provide them all these things so these people will step forward and you know they will create this whole image that they are you know golden hearted people and they are doing this much charity and etc and uh, in return uh, they will buy your loyalty without uh, you knowing it and then Uh, this loyal fan followers so called loyal fan followers they will die for this uh, type of people so that this is how they exploit they know it very well they know how to execute this sort of ideology as far as pakistan is concerned pakistan takes action only when it is under severe international pressure it started cracking down on said's group in 2018 only after it was threatened to put on the gray list of fatf now pakistan is a very experienced country when it comes to fatf's gray list and i have a question for you can you give me the number of countries that are part of number of nations that are part of this fatf fatf is a financial action task force it is an intergovernmental body and uh, it fights against money laundering and terror financing so this is a brief uh, introduction about fatf you have to give me the number of countries that are part of this fatf now pakistan will take action only when you know it will realize that uh, things are getting out of control now uh, you know this uh, fatf will take a severe action only then pakistan will take action and this is as i was telling you like pakistan is a very experienced country 
when it comes to dealing with FATF because this is not the first time Pakistan is in grey list. If I'm not wrong, it is this is the fourth time Pakistan is in this grey list. A fourth or three, a third time or fourth time, but it is definitely more than uh, been more than twice that Pakistan is here in this grey list. The government endorsed the UN ban on this organizations in uh, February 2018, just a few days ahead of FATF meeting. And when uh, these uh, discussions were going on that uh, in future Pakistan should be kept in this uh, blacklist uh, in a 2019 October meeting, the organization had warned Islamabad to take extra measures for complete elimination of terror financing and money laundering or else it will be put in blacklist which is very severe than it was saved by three countries, right? One is China. You need uh, three votes. Uh, if you want to save yourselves, then you need three votes. So China, then Malaysia. And the third one was uh, this uh, Turkey. These three countries helped uh, Pakistan, uh, you know, to, to it protected Pakistan from, uh, from this blacklist uh, threat. So it was saved. Uh, but, you know, this is how it works. And like these countries, you find when it comes to international arena, you have few friends uh, who will save you. And this is very sad as well for a country like means for a country like India because you have been constant victim of, uh, of Pakistan's uh, terrorism. You know, various different countries, they export various different things. Like India is good in services, IT services, let's say, right? There are other services as well, medical services, for example. Right, our professionals, medical professionals are are quite in demand, and they are uh, very successful uh, in in various different parts of the world, like in in Gulf countries. IT people are famous in Western world, Indian IT people. In the same way, you know, uh, various different Japan is good for precision work. In the same way, Pakistan is uh, famous for this. Uh, uh, terrorism exporting this ideology as well as training terrorists and you know sending them to different parts of the world you, they have this dedicated uh, terror organizations that will that will take money from you and then they will execute the things that you want them to do so Pakistan is infamous for this thing and the whole world is aware about this thing and if you go through so many books written by so many experienced people who have worked in various different organizations in India as well as international level they have written in their books uh, that Pakistan has always uh, used uh, this terrorism as as a tool against India. Because officially, if you, if you are sending your soldiers, then that will be starting of a war. So to, you don't want to go ahead with a full-fledged war, but what you want to do is you want to cut India with thousand cuts, isn't it? Let India bleed a thousand. Uh, that's a line, something famous in Uri film as well. So they use this, Pakistan is using this proxy uh, proxy groups, this uh, organizations like Jamaat ud Dawa and others, uh, to to trouble India. So they have always used this dual policy. When it comes to their own home, they will fight. When it comes to other countries, neighbors, particularly Aust uh, Afghanistan, India, then pa Pakistan will export this terrorism. Moving on to next uh, item. So we have we have done with this two editorials. Now let's talk about this very interesting, very beautiful article towards a new world order. It starts with this World Economic Forum. World Economic Forum has become a mecca for all forms of new capitalism, right? The capitalism is the main focus here. Now, if you go through World Economic Forum, if you go through the basic things about World Economic Forum, you'll realize that the main purpose of uh, this organization is, as well as it was, uh, to create a more sustainable world, to create a bridge between government and this uh, business people and to create a world uh, where things are more sustainable right uh, so you can see the tagline as well committed to improving the state of the world it started back in 1971 i have a question for you can you give me the name of the founder and the chairperson of this world economic forum so in 1971 it uh, you know the birth took place uh, with a noble objective of improving the state of the world but now it serves as a platform for world leaders, billionaires, uh, famous people, you know, ministers and uh, celebrities. They become part of this World Economic Forum meeting. And I have a question for you. This is going to be the third one. So the third question is, can you give me the name of that city where you find this meeting taking place, this summit taking place every year? It's in Switzerland. So give me the name. So basically, I have asked you three questions. The first one is about FATF and two questions are, about World Economic Forum, isn't it? 
Right. So nowadays it it looks like it's it's all about uh, you know a gathering of a famous uh, famous people, famous faces, and the messages from uh, these meetings uh, you know they they fade quite uh, quite rapidly. All the issues uh, can be condensed into just one uh, relating to survival of the planet itself. That's that's the central theme that we find in all the meetings uh, as well as the recent meeting. But if we go through some reports, for example, Oxfam report uh, says that uh, there are 2,153 billionaires. They have more than four. Uh, they have uh, more wealth than 4.6 billion people. Uh, the emergence of billionaires and oligarchs in in different parts of the world it coincides with increased poverty few people are getting very rich at the same time masses are becoming very poor so we have this imbalance in our society and sadly in today's world right uh, what people generally speaking that's what my observation is i can be totally wrong but if you if you see the scale let's imagine like this is a scale so more and more people if you ask them what they won't, means this is the situation you have uh, you know few people they have huge amount of wealth and there are huge amount of uh, you know people they have very less wealth or they have nothing if you can say nothing you know so yes i was talking about this thing that if you if you ask if you if you observe people around the world right uh, the things they like the things they are sharing online the things they they are working for you find more and more people are after more and more things we need big cars we need uh, new clothes we want uh, new phones and you know we want to change this thing um, quite quickly or rapidly as possible so this is not life is all about you know it's more than that it's it's about caring for the world as well it means material things yes we need them i'm not saying that we need to get rid of our mobile phones and cars and all these things are unnecessary no but these things are never going to end. You know, if you, means this is an old story, you know it very well, but still I would like to mention it here that if you have a, if you have one car, then after a few months you want a much bigger, much faster car, you know, so this thing uh, is going on. But we have to identify and realize that uh, this way of living is not helpful and developed worlds as well as uh, china these countries are capturing energy generating resources and they are using this energy generating resources uh, for for creating for wealth creation and this cycle this is a vicious cycle it looks good right it will give us a sort of a pleasure but it look it's not that healthy for the world and in the process sustainability is becoming a casualty now there are two laws of uh, thermodynamics uh, the first law states that energy can neither be created nor destroyed it merely changes form and is always conserved the second law states that when work is done only a part of the energy is consumed the balance is lost the lost part is called entropy and it is proven that entropy always maximizes the higher the use of energy, the larger the amount of waste generated. Look at the computers. Look at e-waste problem at present. Now, if you see global uh, scenario or when it comes to recycling, like uh, uh, sh ship recycling, or if you see this uh, computers and other things, it's you know easily you can buy. Uh, a computer uh, second hand uh, or laptop and things like that or mobile phones as well used refurbished mobile phones uh, they are used by this western world and then they are dumped in countries like india uh, so there are pros and cons of it but what happens is in usa and other countries it's very expensive to get your computers uh, repaired so what they do is they will chuck it away in the bin and they will buy a new one so this old one will come to countries like india a little bit of repairing a little bit of touch here and there and then it will be sold back in our market so they are basically dumping their waste in our country second thing all this uh, other e-waste you know that that, that uh, we means there are people they are making huge amount of money uh, by recycling e-waste but this lead mercury and other things uh, that are um, you know that are that are byproduct of this e-waste uh, they they penetrate in our 
uh, you know, ground. Uh, they contaminate our drinking water and other resources. They pollute our soil and other things. But, you know, these things are still going on. So the more and more products, the more we are using, uh, we are destroying the world. And these countries are very good in exporting this sort of bad things uh, to, to different countries, to poor countries particularly. Countries in the developed world in China are ferociously using up finite raw materials without care or concern for the welfare of present and uh, future generation. Intellectual property rights and the other systems are, are designed in such a way that it favors uh, the person who is rich or rich people. Nordic economic model is something that has been suggested here. Now, uh, when we say Nordic or Scandinavian countries, you have Iceland, you have uh, Norway, Sweden, Finland, Denmark. These countries, uh, they are uh, the finest, I would say, countries in the world. Uh, total population is 70, uh, make a pardon, 27 million people are living here. Uh, these nations are among the richest in the world, but at the same time, if you observe their... Uh, their wealth. Uh, they are not uh, those, uh, you know, huge energy consuming, or I would say destroying. They are more sustainable uh, rich countries and we should follow them. They have a uh, very high tax, uh, but this tax is used for, this money is used for providing good facilities like they have effective welfare safety nets, corruption free governance, fundamental rights of education and uh, good health, good transportation. If I'm not wrong, uh, if you are a let's say common person living in um in in uh, if a layman of sweden or this uh, scandinavian country will pay somewhere around 50 percent tax if you earn one lakh rupees then you will pay fifty thousand as tax but in return you will get good things uh, you know the best things uh, from the government and they are also the happiest countries in the world. USA is not the happiest country in the world. It is uh, maybe a power, most powerful country, but not the happiest. Because the companies of these countries, Scandinavian countries, they follow this four Ps. P for profit. Profit is important, no doubt. But this profit should be legit. Then P for people. How the company's actions impact not only employees, but society as a whole. P for planet. Uh, are the company's actions and plans are sensitive to the environment? And uh, P is uh, for purpose, which means the companies and individuals must develop a larger purpose than business as usual. Uh, remember the case of Tata, right? Tata talks about looking after your customer, looking after your people. Because if you destroy, if you are, you can, you know, cheat once, twice or thrice, but it will not go forever. So... This is something that Tata and co companies like, there are so many other companies, uh, but Tata is something that is very famous. So I have used the example of Tata. So it's not just profit. It's also about uh, looking after society. And it's not a fake thing. You know, you, you have to genuinely look after the society because if so society is not, if environment is not there, then if you have the, if you are the richest person, but if you, if you don't get clean air to breathe, Right, then, then your money will be of no use, isn't it? So market capitalization uh, need not to be the only way to measure the value of a company. It should be the sustainability and looking after environment and things like that. And this is what governments of different parts of the world, they should learn from these countries. And uh, so should uh, this uh, World Economic Forum. Moving on to next item, a marriage story for everyone. This one is about uh, this case uh, that is going or, or a petition that has uh, recently been filed in Kerala High Court. Special Marriage Act of 1954. It allows and facilitates the registration of inter-religious marriages. And our Supreme Court has championed the course of individual autonomy in matters of love, sex and marriage, including uh, this case of uh, Shafin Jahan versus uh, Ashokan 2018. Uh, Shakti Vahini versus uh, Union of India 2018 and Navtej Johar versus Union of India 2018. This one is quite famous case. Now, in Navtej Johar case, uh, this uh, section 377 was struck down by Supreme Court. Uh, it was uh, declared unconstitutional uh, because uh, you have this article 14 that is right to equality. Everyone should be equal. Right to freedom. Freedom of means doing things that you want to do without harming anyone. And uh, Article 21, right to life. So, basically what used to happen under Article, or this not Article, but Section 377 is, 
of this uh, Indian Penal Court that uh, two lesbians or two gays, let's say, right, they were not allowed to have, uh, uh, means if they have a sexual relationship, then that was considered illegal. And uh, we have cases where uh, uh, this LGBTQ, LGBTQ plus community, uh, they were uh, harassed by uh, police or by the administration uh, just because of their uh, sexual preference. So this was struck down by Supreme Court in this Novtej Johar case. Now a petition has recently been filed in Kerala High Court by a male same-sex couple and they have challenged this as constitutionality of Special Marriage Act. It is okay for opposite sex couple but when it comes to same-sex couple as per this petition, this act is discriminatory. Now, in you know, in in our country, India, or let's talk about India. Let's not talk about about different parts of the world. Let's focus on India. It will be much relevant here. So, marriage is about legal rights and protections, isn't it? Uh, it's it's uh, sharing wealth. It's uh, you know, if uh, you go for a divorce, uh, then you get uh, you can seek a right for maintenance. You get uh, uh, you know uh, property. In 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 you inherit uh, property if uh, someone passes away. So all this is you know part of this legal rights and protection that you get from marriage. At the same time, at the same time, marriage in India is not just about this legal rights and protection. It's also about uh, about our uh, about our society, like stages of human development and aspiration. Now, in this stages of uh, development and aspiration, normally what we say is. That marriage is about uh, financial stability, uh, physical, emotional care, uh, sexual intimacy, love, etc. You get everything. And uh, the main purpose, uh, the deep purpose is uh, to create a family uh, for uh, procreation, you know, and child rearing. That you, that you give birth to a child and then, you know, raise that child and you are adding human beings in societies and things like that. So procreation is one of the core thing of marriage. But in this article, it's a very interesting argument that if procreation were quite so central to marriage, opposite sex couples, the normal couples that we say, when I say normal, I'm, I don't mean to say disrespect to LGBTQ plus community, but uh, maximum people, right, uh, are following this normal, or I would say the normal thing is opposite sex couples getting married, isn't it? So opposite sex couples would be required to prove their fertility if, if, procreation was or if it is the most important thing then before marriage you have to prove your fertility and uh, if you can produce babies then yes you can marry if you cannot then you cannot marry right or you can also say that uh, let's say opposite uh, sex couple right they are they are married now and uh, for whatever reason uh, they are not able to procreate so that marriage uh, can we call it a legal marriage or valid not legal but valid or that should be, uh, you know, end up uh, as a divorce. So, this point is very interesting. So, if procreation was the only important or the most important thing or, or a sort of uh, scale or a benchmark, then this opposite sex couples as well, they also face uh, various different challenges. So, yeah, the argument is that when it comes to LGBTQ plus community, it's not about just procreation, marriage is all about all these things, uh, legal rights and pro uh, protection, as well as financial, physical, emotional, sexual intimacy, love to individuals and these things. So just based on one, this procreation, you cannot say that marriage is, uh, the same sex marriage is not valid. So as per this article, Kerala High Court uh, is having a unique opportunity uh, to go ahead uh, with the Supreme Court's uh, stand on this, on this uh, case, Navtej uh, Johar, this Article 14, 21 and 19, to go ahead with Supreme Court. And uh, then we have uh, this article here, should women be given uh, command posts in the army? If you go through this article, right, easy to understand, easy to read article, so not going through each and every line here, but I'll give you my viewpoint here. When it comes to any organization, any organization, army at the end of the day is an organization, government as well as uh, any, you know, it's all about system and organization. 
and on top you have human beings systems organizations they are there for human beings so what we need is we need a right person at a right time uh, you know with a right pay at a right place that's what we need so it doesn't matter if that person is a man or a woman or a transgender it doesn't matter we need the best person um at a place you know this should be our human uh, resource policy when it comes to army as well this applies to them as well uh because we have this uh, you know whole uh, this whole origin like uh, men can do it and women cannot and this sort of things this patriarchal thinking uh, because of this thing it's it becomes a bit difficult to digest but uh, you know all the things that men can do women can do it as well earlier on things were different because the tools were different earlier on tools were designed for for males but now right from pen to your computer it's not designed for men it, they are all unisex we are using most of the items that we are using is unisex now so uh, when it comes to gush, machine guns uh, fighter jets everything you know so there's nothing that can I mean so so the basic answer is yes should women be given command and posts in the army yes they should be given but again a right person right published uh, criminal history of uh, candidates uh, has been said by supreme court uh, corona virus death uh, deaths uh, spike in china 242 died in just one day uh, slapping section 144 Uh, during ca protest is illegal has been said by high court of karnataka uh, cloud over talks uh, uh, trade talks as us official puts off his trip uh, experts meet to discuss uh, restoration of sun temple it's a unesco world heritage site and uh, government notifies medical devices as drugs and that's everything in today's uh, discussion dear friends uh, thank you very much for watching this video i'll see you all soon till then enjoy your stories god bless you all jai hind